Hey everybody, this is D Shen, and welcome back. Uh, I am your Lawai Zai Beijing. For those of you who don't know, Lawai means foreigner, Zai means in, and Beijing is Beijing. I'm your foreigner in Beijing. So today, uh, I'm going to talk a little bit about the three T's we don't talk about here. For those of you who know uh, know me and know that I've been. Uh, here for quite a while. I've been here since the 90s, uh, here being China. Um, there are things that we just don't talk about. Welcome, Big Tex. Um, we don't talk about certain things while you live here in China, while you're here in China. And yeah, I don't know if it's coming through on this microphone, but I am whispering. Um, even though things have changed a lot in China over the years since I've been here uh, in the 90s, it, it's still sometimes a little scary to talk about certain things. Specifically, the three T's, which we're going to talk about in a second here. Um, in fact, I'm going to tell you some stories of when uh, I was younger. I've actually been in situations where they had undercovers try to trick me. And uh, hey, Alex, Alexis, sorry. Um, and they tried to trick me into actually saying things that you know <laughs> could have gotten me into big, big issues. Yo. Um, so let's start with the first T. First T is Tiananmen, right? Or as they say here, Tiananmen. So now, not just the place, but specifically that one event, which I'm still not going to mention, uh, from the 20th century. Uh, we don't talk about that here, and it's very much um, oppressed. Um, I mean, during the anniversary of that time every year, uh, everything goes into lockdown, security mode. Um, I mean, they people try to bring flowers. Try, people try to go there and remember that moment in time. <laughs> if you can't tell, I'm still a little bit even nervous talking about it right now. Um, but what happens is they pretty much shut everyone down. They shut down the situation. Uh, they shut down that location. Uh, they will, um, ha you'll see police out in force pretty much every major corner and even in some areas that are where people congregate a lot uh, they try to stop any chance of anyone uh, celebrating or not celebrating but uh, paying tribute to that moment in time uh, it's very very risky hey Simon uh, so you've got to be very careful if you're here in China um, mentioning that tea uh, so that first tea again is Tiananmen uh, yeah, if you search, I mean, I remember back in the day, this is, uh, early 2000s, uh, I had a friend of mine, she, uh, we lived up north, which is north of Beijing in a small city, uh, <laughs> by Chinese standards, it's a small city, 1.3 million people, uh, it's a police state, lived there two years, yeah, I've been here over 22 years, <laughs> I, I know exactly what you're talking about, um, it's more than just a police state, I mean, it's a communist nation, even though they allow you to own house, own houses, you actually just lease them for a maximum of 70 years. Uh, you can't actually own own. But, um, yeah, you can own a business and stuff like that. But it's still a communist nation. So, anyways, my friend, uh, this was back in the early 2000s. Uh, this is right before Google actually got shut down here in China. Uh, just to give you an idea of the time length here. So, um she was doing, doing a regular search. She was actually searching online on Google for Tiananmen. And when she looked up Tiananmen, her internet went down mysteriously. Um, and it was shut down for several days, and then it mysteriously came back. Um, her friends uh, who lived in the same building had no problems. I had no problems. I didn't live in the same building, but I lived nearby. Um, but yeah, she did that search. It got shut down. She did wind up doing a test again. Uh, a few months later, we kind of dared her to, and then that time it got shut down for over a week, uh, but eventually it did come back on. It was more or less like, hey, we're watching. So uh, in those days, we also had uh, black cars that literally snatched people off the street, and there's a bunch of other things that happened in those days, which I'll talk about in later videos. So um, yeah, uh, that's Tiananmen. So the second T, let's talk about that one. Um, Tibet. Uh, so we, you don't really talk about the whole situation there. 
Uh, you can talk about how cool Tibet is. You know, it's a cool place to go, beautiful scenery, awesome temples, great culture. But that other stuff, <laughs> like when it became part of China again, <laughs> or reclaimed, reclaimed into uh, uh, China. <laughs> um, and then the um, control over since then, um, we don't talk about. We never, never mention that stuff. Hey. Um, yeah, we try to stay away from that topic, topic uh, Tibet. Actually, there was a really cool guy. He's a documentarist, uh, director of documentaries. Um, he, I met him it's about three years ago. I was running a uh, Tex-Mex restaurant here in the city, Beijing. And uh, while I was there one night, he came in, and we wound up talking for a couple hours. He was telling me about these different documentaries he's done. And uh, he's really good. He was really good. Um, anyways, he was just doing some editing here in the city on uh, Tibet, and he was telling me how yeah he has so much oversight. And he's actually from Hong Kong itself, which enjoys a little bit more of uh, freedoms and relaxation, freedom of speech and whatnot, more freedom of speech than uh, we actually have here in mainland China. Um, but of course, not like the U.S. The U.S. it's actually law, sort of. <laughs> well, I mean, it is technically law, but... Anyways, that's a whole nother topic. So, um, yeah, uh, he was telling me about how he's from Hong Kong and how he was doing this whole documentary on Tibet, the Tibetan people, the history of it. And as he was going through the editing process, which is uh, government-run organizations, uh, if you want your videos or anything to go yeah, mainstream, um, he was telling me about how, like, how huge sections were just being sliced out, sliced out, sliced out. And they had to redo wordings and voiceovers and everything else because so much of it was being censored off. And it was it was crazy. I actually wound up seeing a rough cut of the original versus the final. Uh, he gave me a couple, yeah, he gave me a private viewing and all. And, oh my God, I mean, <laughs> the difference between the two is night and day, right? You go from this one that was like, realistic <laughs> to this beautiful peaceful wonderful uh disney style and it, it was just it was i mean he he felt so disgusted he didn't even want to launch the original one i mean that was how it actually uh, how bad it was uh or i mean not the original one he didn't want to launch the uh the edited version of it and i i can't blame him i mean i can't blame him i remember there was this movie um in the early 2000s also it's called Lost in Beijing. You can actually look it up. I think it's on. It's not on YouTube because it has some uh, uh, nude scenes. But you can look on most torrent sites. And what happened was Lost in Beijing. Per personally, I think it's a freaking awesome movie. Okay, um, I actually know a couple of the actors that were in there. And of course, uh, if you're Chinese, you know the famous one, <laughs> the famous female uh, lead actress there, the younger lead actress. Um, so, anyways, yeah, uh, it freaking awesome movie, right? It's all about, um, it, so it starts off with this guy. He actually owns a KTV. I'm sorry, not a KTV, a massage uh, parlor. And, of course, we all know, you know, massage parlor. <laughs> but this was supposed to be a legit massage parlor. But he was big wig. Yeah, he had the car. He had the jewelry. Uh, here in China, there's a whole thing about wearing gold. Uh, you're a gangster. Um, you're a mafia member. If you wear, like, the big gold chains or bracelets or men wear rings, you're considered that kind of class. So, anyways... Uh, it starts off with uh, him driving through Beijing, and actually not far from where I live here. And uh, he goes to a hotel room, and then you have this young, very attractive Chinese girl uh, walking through the streets, going into a Chinese restaurant, going up these stairs, back stairs, into the back entrance of this hotel. Um, and then when she gets into the hotel, she goes to the room. Of course, she's a prostitute. Um, and then she says something like, uh, hurry up, I got to go meet my boyfriend. And he gets pissed, gives her a few hundred kwai, which is you know, a couple bucks, and says, just get out of here. I, I, you know, I don't like to be rushed. That was the, That's the opening scene. Um, now, of course, a lot of this movie, and the context of the movie was essentially that this guy who owns the KTV has a wife, and they're not really in a great place. And then this woman who works in, as a uh, masseuse, but a legit masseuse, um, she's very poor, her and her husband, they live in a room about the size of, or an entire apartment that about the size of my uh, living room here in Beijing. And um, uh, anyways, long story short, 
Uh, the girl goes out one night with one of her coworkers, gets drunk, uh, passed out in one of the empty rooms. Uh, it's a big you know, communal massage place. Uh, they had lots of chairs there, lots of tables, so it's not like a private weird sex thing. Um, but yeah, she passed out in one of the chairs. Um, the guy was coming in and they are basically raping her in China. It was considered weird sex or whatever. But anyways, I mean, by our standards, she was raped. Um, the husband just happens to be the window washer and happens to be washing that window. And he saw this big fight ensued. She gets pregnant. Uh, I mean, I'm really, uh, I'm not going to try to ruin this movie for you, but the, the point of explaining this, these details of the movie is this was such a negative, uh, look onto China that the Chinese censorship, uh, just completely said, no, screw you. You were not showing this movie. This movie is banned in China. You cannot release it. So what did the guy do, the director do? He released it on torrents. <laughs> Gave it out to the world for free because, you know, he's like, screw it. I, I made this movie. It's my art. I want it out there. And it was, and it, to be honest, it's a very realistic view of life here uh, in many, many ways. So anyways, the name of the movie is uh, um, Lost in Beijing. Uh, and you can look it up in English. Uh, it, there is no, su- uh, there is no, um, um, there, there are subtitles, right? It's not dubbed in English. It's all Chinese, but there are English subtitles available on the torrents when you download them from the torrent websites, um, you know, uTorrent or whatever you happen to use. So, um, anyways, uh, anything that shows a negative spin, the whole reason I brought this up was the documentary about Tibet. So anything that shows negative, uh, views towards China is flat out, yeah, censored. <laughs> so, um, yeah, the, so that was the second T. So we got Tiananmen, Tibet, and then the last T is Taiwan, um, which if you ask any Chinese mainlander, Taiwan is just a province. It's a rogue province. Uh, of course, you ask Taiwanese who live here, um, yeah, live here in mainland China, they say, no, we're another nation. We have our own passports. We have our own money. We have our own constitution. We have our own leaderships. Um, but, you know, I mean, that's, I don't know. It's a really iffy thing because we all know Hong Kong is part of China, but yet Hong Kong has their own money. They have their own leadership. They have their own constitution. They have their own passports too. In fact, Chinese to go to Hong Kong need a visa. Yeah, Hong Kong, uh, Chinese need a visa to go to Macau. Chinese need a visa to go to Taiwan. Um, they don't need a visa to go to Tibet, but funny enough, even though I live in China, that's the only part of China where I need a different visa mm-hmm. to go to Tibet. So anyways, uh, the point is, um, those are the three T's. Uh, yeah, so uh, Tiananmen, Taiwan, Tibet, or yeah, not necessarily in that order. Um, so I wanted to tell you a, a really funny story about, um, 2005, I think it was. So I was living in this, uh, small town, uh, here in Northern Beijing or Northern China, sorry. And I'm out in the supermarket one day and what happens? This guy comes up to me, uh, while I'm in the supermarket, uh, pretty good sized guy, about my size, you know, a little taller and Chinese. And he comes up to me and he says, Hi. Now, I lived in a city where, uh, or a town, (laughs) where it had about a couple hundred thousand people living just in the local area. And at any given time, there was only about 10 to 12 foreigners. So I knew all the foreigners. The foreigners knew me. We all knew each other. We hung out on weekends. I mean, we were the only group that we had, right? We had to support each other. This, uh, it got kind of lonely, especially in those days. I mean, we're talking about before... Um, smartphones before, yeah, at the infancy of like Facebook and YouTube and all that. This is early 2000s. And um, welcome uh, all new joiners here. Uh, we're talking about the three T's. So the guy comes up to me, this Chinese guy comes up to me. He says, hi. And of course I was uh, happy. Hey, there's a Chinese guy that speaks English. And my Chinese was, really was bad in those days. I mean, I was limited to only a couple dozen words. Most of those being numbers. <laughs> <laughs> just so I can buy things. Um, so the guy comes up to me, says hi, and uh, I said hi, and uh, he says, so where are you from? I said, I'm from the States, I live here. He says, oh, you've been here a while? I said, yeah, been here a little while. He said, oh, that's cool, what do you do? And I, I explained to my job and stuff. And then he starts going right on to the topic of 
the three T's, Taiwan, Tibet, and Tiananmen. Um, and right away, I mean, you could feel from him this vibe of, wait, you're trying to trick me, aren't you? And um, <laughs> I, he's like, I'm like, hey, uh, thanks, man. I, I, I got to go. I got to go. And he says, uh, hey, don't, no, don't worry about it. We can talk about anything we want. You know, they're not going to bother us. I'm an important person here. <laughs> Bye. Yeah. Because what they did, and, and it still happens even today, uh, especially in, if you know, a foreigner is in an area too long or uh, pisses off the wrong person, they'll sit there and they'll be like, hey, yeah, they'll try to entrap you. They'll trick you into th- saying things or doing things that uh, you just, that will get you into trouble. Uh, it's very, very common. I've heard about it so often. It, it happens less now than it used to. So as soon as it happened, I was like, all right, I know what's going on. And I pulled myself away from that situation. Um, that town I was in, I had some issues with the local law enforcement. <laughs> um, I won't go into it. Not, <laughs> not online. Uh, I'm using a VPN, but I still don't want to get into it too much, right? Um so yeah, uh, yeah, they tried to trick me and uh, I got away because I didn't fall for it. But I know a lot of people who did fall for that kind of stuff and they end up uh, getting locked up, detained, deported, fined. Um, you know, I mean, just really ridiculous things. But yeah, the thing is, and a lot of people would say to me, oh, then why are you there? Why, why are you staying with this place? And why would you put up with it? But the truth is, uh, all in all, I love this place. Yeah, you know, I, I absolutely love it. Um, it's changed. You know, think of it like uh, the old days in the States you know, uh, when we had the Cold War with Russia. Uh, if you were a communist, you were locked up, right? Even if you were suspected of being a communist, you could lose your job, lose your house, lose, uh, lose your life even uh, back in those days. Uh, how fast the American people seem to forget that. Uh, <laughs> well, yeah, China is the same way. Yeah, China's been the same way uh, with situations, and you know what? It's changing. It is changing. I, I, there used to be a whole sort of unstated rule that foreigners couldn't congregate with each other. Not too many of them. Uh, today, it's not a big deal. We have entire districts here that are dedicated pretty much to the foreigners. Yeah, uh, you, know, you get huge crowds of us hanging out together. It's no big deal anymore. Um, China's definitely opening up. China's a much better place than it used to be. Um, much safer. You, know, you don't have to worry about it as much. Uh, one of the things I remember hearing about, now I'm Jewish, but a lot of my friends who are Christian, they were talking about the underground churches. Now, in my mind, I was actually thinking about them being un- literally underground. I didn't understand. They meant something like the Underground Railroad in the U.S., if you guys are familiar with, if you're from America and familiar with uh, our history. Um, the slave, uh, the uh, freedom, uh, the Underground Railroad to help the slaves get to freedom in the North or in Canada. Um, so, yeah, uh, I didn't realize what they meant. And then I came here and I, I actually went to an underground church. Uh, I was secretly invited to one. It was really interesting. I got to tell you, you know, I've been to churches in the States. But, you yeah, know, when you go to places like this where it's not legal, but that they still have that devotion for uh God or yeah, they whoever they believe in, whether it's a Christian church, Catholic church, or, uh, a mosque, or whatever it happens to be, uh, they get this like. There's this vibe in the air, this um, this amazing uh, feeling of joy from these people who are worshiping in whatever capacity they're worshiping, uh, especially when there's a chance of prosecution, persecution, sorry, and prosecution. So, um, yeah, I was invited to the church once, the underground church, and I went. And I stayed in the back, and they invited me up front and all, and they were all, they were talking, I could understand the idea of what they were talking about. Uh, I mean, they had a pastor up there, it felt more like a a very Baptist-style church. Yeah, Southern Baptist, yeah. Worshipping and praying and holding up the Bible, talking, and they had the... The signs on the side. Uh, I mean, I could, I couldn't read them, but I understood John three sixteen. Yeah, um, yeah. The what's it? I don't, I don't remember the uh, the verse, but you guys know what I'm talking about. Uh, for what was it? For God so loved the world that He gave His only begotten Son. For 
I forgot. I'm not Christian. <laughs> I just remember people talking about it. Anyways, you know the one I'm talking about. If you're Christian. Um, so uh, it was really an uh, interesting experience. Anyways, I, I wound up finding out later that uh, shortly after I went, the church was busted. Um, I always felt guilty. I thought maybe they followed me. I didn't know. Uh, but a bunch of people got arrested and I never heard from them again. Uh, I was invited to a church later on, a few years later, but I denied the request because of what happened. Anyways, point is today, there are churches everywhere. Um, <laughs> thanks, bro. Um, yeah, but there are uh, churches everywhere here. You got mosques, you got temples, we got Chabad for the Jews. Um, you got uh, Buddhism. I mean, religions are out there here. Right? It's not like it used to be where it was really closed. It's more open. It's more welcoming. It's more loving. Uh, I had a woman the other day, actually, I was at Carrefour, which is a large supermarket here. Um, it's a French supermarket, but it's huge. It's like a Walmart back home, a super Walmart back home, um, two floors and all. Anyways, uh, I'm standing in line, and the woman, uh, she didn't speak any English. Well, sort of didn't speak English. Uh, <laughs> it's the second time this specific thing happened to me. She actually handed me a Christian track. Now, I don't know if you guys know about Christian tracks, but they're these little books that have like, um, oh God, what's it called? The plan of salvation, right? It, um, it's like, if you believe in Jesus or if you want to believe in Jesus, and if you're Christian, I'm sorry, please forgive me if I'm getting these things wrong. Uh, I'm going off of what I've been told, uh, what I've been shown by Christians and Catholics and all. So plan of salvation is like, uh, uh, you've got to accept Jesus, um, uh, forgive the sins I, I i forgot it's been years so many years since someone told me about this stuff so anyways she handed me this little track and i knew it was a track because well you have the cross on there and you have jesus you know hanging on the cross um and i've seen these things in america and it's almost identical except it's in chinese um so i said oh yeah you're christian i said ask her in chinese and uh, she said yes uh, she said are you i said no and then I had, I usually wear my mezuzah. I actually took it off. It's in the room. I wear a mezuzah around my neck. I said, no, uh, yeah, I'm Jewish. What should you tie uh, I'm Jewish. And uh, <laughs> she goes, oh, Jewish? Oh, wow. Very good. And I'm like, oh, God, not one of these. <laughs> Chinese, and not just Chinese, but people, and especially in Asian nations, I have found that as soon as they find out you're Jewish, they always treat you really weirdly. Uh, yeah, their idea is that all Jews are, are, are very clever, are the smartest people, uh, are very rich. And I'm like, <laughs> you don't know me. <laughs> I wouldn't fall into all those categories, <laughs> if any. Um, so, yeah, it, it's an interesting experience. Um, but, yeah, Christianity is out there. Now, that there are rules. There are definitely rules. Like... Um, I remember this was, uh, what was this? This is like five, six years ago. I was, uh, I was actually teaching this, uh, Montessori class and I, we were doing cultures and I actually wound up building, uh, 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 a, uh, Russia, uh, a Russia Shana setup, uh, in my class because I was doing, uh, for Jews, uh, the culture of the Jewish faith. Uh, we had teachers from all over the world. So, yeah, we had the French, we had the Italian, uh, we had a Greek uh, gentleman from uh, Greece in there, uh, we had a Turk, uh, an Iranian, and they, we, every classroom we did something different, and I did something that was very similar to uh, what we would do for Rosh Hashanah, uh, which, by the way, is coming up. <laughs> and um, <clears throat> so, anyways, I called the local rabbi, and I asked him, yeah, would you be willing to come down and uh, talk to the students? Um, uh, about Rosh Hashanah because even today, you know, as much as I try to practice Judaism uh, as a Jew, uh, I'm I'm not anywhere as good as any rabbi. And heck, I'm yeah, I'm still learning myself. Uh, heck, every day is a learning process in any faith or in anything we do. So um, I asked the rabbi, yeah, could you come down? Could you talk to the students? The students are like. Yeah, you know, five years old, I think, five, six years old, something like that. And uh, he explained to me, no, he can't because of the rules and the laws here. Uh, we can't preach to or explain our religion, not necessarily preach, but explain our faith to 
Chinese. That's like part of the law. Something I, I wasn't aware of. So apparently uh, Chinese can, like the woman I mentioned in the supermarket down the street, she can come and talk to me about the religion, but she can't talk to other Chinese. And uh, that actually happened a couple times. Yeah, I've had uh, women come up to me before. And these are usually like cute little grandmas that come up to you with a track and they'll, they'll try to, uh, they, for, they don't expect me to speak Chinese. So they'll come up to me and they'll be like, mm, mm, mm. yeah, not even speaking because they expect me not to understand them, but um, they won't. Yeah, I've actually had ones that will come up to me and do it very secretly. Like, Gaini uh, means uh, give you. Yeah, I give it to you. Um, and they'll be very quiet and very subtle about it. Been looking around, all nervous. It's really, it's sad, but it's also cute at the same time. Um, so, yeah. Anyways, I, I kind of went off topic there a little bit. I wanted to talk about the three T's, which I did. Tiananmen, Taiwan, and Tibet. Um, talked a little bit about religion and whatnot here. The point, uh, at the end of the day, I do want to say, you know, I love this place. Uh, China's a really awesome place to be. Uh, they do have great culture. Um, I think the people are actually truly, truly, truly wonderful in general. Uh, great hearts. Uh, back home, got the same. But uh, listen, if you ever wanted to come out to China, I definitely recommend it. I live in Beijing. I've been here for years. Hit me up. Send me a message. I'll be more than happy to talk to you about life here. Uh, life, living life, working, traveling. Uh, I have lots of experience in all of that stuff. Uh, don't forget to hit the you know, share button on this. Hit the like button. Uh, share it with all your friends. Uh, you can find me on Facebook, Twitter, um, Instagram, uh, pretty much on everything right now. Uh, you can find me under La Wai Zai Beijing, which is uh, in my description, uh, or Adina's Chinese, which is my Chinese teaching channel. Uh, so anyways, for today, let me uh, tell you a little bit of Chinese, uh, get you started. So if you ever walk up to someone here, there are many ways to greet people here. But if you know somebody, if you're familiar with them, friends, family, co-workers, you don't have to say hello. A very common uh, way of greeting people here is ni chirlama, ni chirlama, ni chirlama, which essentially means have you eaten? Um, and the response would be chirla. I've eaten, uh, or bu chula, bu chula, which or me chula, sorry, uh, which means I haven't eaten. Um, so yeah, that's a greeting. So I'm sure many of you have heard the greeting ni hao, but this is another one you can have. It's ni chula ma, chula, hey chula. So have you eaten? Yes, I have, or no, I haven't. Uh, so that's your Chinese for today. Again, I'm Di Shen, La Wai Zai Beijing the foreigner in Beijing, and I hope you enjoyed this video. Take care, and I'll see you guys next time. Huh? Actually, I'll see you tomorrow. Cheers.